Uh, I will tell you, first, before I make the rest of my comments and ask my question, uh, I am proud to sit here as a supporter of the VAWA reauthorization of 2013. I remember having uh, women from Indian country coming into my office and sitting down and telling me their story that was very persuasive and helpful in coming to my own decision to vote in favor of the VAWA reauthorization of 2013. I think VAWA has been a critical piece of legislation in combating missing and murdered indigenous women crisis. In fact, I'm encouraged by the, the bipartisan work that's being done in the committee and the current direction of the negotiations. It's been hung up a few times, uh, and I think we've got to get these tribal provisions right, and I think we're headed in the right direction. But that said, I will tell you it's disheartening to see some partisan politics going on with the underlying bill and a, to push an unconstitutional version that was passed by the House. Democrats, by extension, are holding up any hope at a bipartisan deal with the underlying bill by pushing it and pushing an unconstitutional version that was passed by the House. The reason is because there are provisions here that will attempt to strip Montanans of their Second Amendment rights. The larger package that passed the U.S. House in March contains language that would stifle Montanans' right to keep and bear arms. The current conversation circulating around VAWA uh, includes President Biden's unconstitutional gun control agenda surrounding the so-called boyfriend loophole. As H.R. 1620 shows, the apparent cost of closing this new loophole is to, number one, enact retroactive lifetime gun bans for misdemeanor offenses, two, create federal ex parte gun bans, and three, fund and train police agencies to seize guns from these new retroactively prohibited gun owners. Should a misdemeanor stand as the line cross for an individual to lose a constitutional right? That's an important question. Should Americans be deprived of a constitutional right without first facing their accuser in a court of law? This current language would essentially create red flag gun confiscation orders in states that have never passed one. By adding an ex parte gun ban to restraining order laws, meaning an individual could lose their right to bear arms without even knowing it. On top of that, this bill subsidizes the prosecution of misdemeanor gun bans, misdemeanor gun bans, and the enforcement of these newly co-opted gun confiscation laws. We don't need more infringements on the right to keep and bear arms. We need to restore it. There was a recent Wall Street Journal article just from September. About 50% of new gun buyers are women. Historically, it's been about 10 to 20% for decades. Until the last two years, 50% approximately of all new U.S. gun buyers are women. There's a reason for that. They want to be able to protect themselves. Women do not need more gun control. Gun rights are women's rights. Yet my colleagues are using an important piece of legislation I believe is a Trojan horse for gun control legislation that otherwise would never, ever be passed. It's imperative that we as a legislative body put some of these pet projects aside. Let's remove this language from VAWA and get back to the bipartisan nature of the conversation and negotiations, and let's get VAWA reauthorized again.